Shalawal. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakak, Radash. Peace to the hopeful elect of Israel. Double honors to the apostles, the elders, and brethren, a great millstone, and all like minded brothers who are preaching the truth all around the earth. Uh, this is your brother, Atazawan Baya. Uh, I'm going to bring a quick little lesson, Lord willing, and be edifying to anybody that watches this. Um, just ran across a, a, a feed, okay, uh, if you will, with um, FedEx, uh, the company FedEx, who's requesting the uh, Washington Redskins owner to change the name. Okay, so I looked it up here on YouTube, so I can, and you got this guy, Roland Martin, who's a, a old political pundit. Um, who used to be on CNN and now he's got his own uh, uh, show that he that he broadcasts on YouTube. But anyway, he 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 covered the uh, subject of the Redskins and FedEx. Um, and we'll watch uh, this video is eight minutes long. May not watch that much of it. There's a, just a little point that I want to get out of it. Um, but first, let me let me go ahead and open up with a scripture. I'm going to go to uh, Zephaniah 2, and it reads, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather, gather together, O nation not desired, which are the Israelites, okay, Israel, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as a chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Verse 3, seek ye the Lord, Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. All right. Now, we're the only people that have gotten the judgment of the Lord thus far, okay, to, to, to this degree where we are basically a destroyed people. Okay. Uh, reading on, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Okay. And what we're having now with all the crisis that's going on in the earth right now that the Lord is bringing and allowing to happen, okay, um, that these these people, man, who've been ruling over us and we're in the you know under their captivity, you know, uh, even even their old kind are starting to put the heat on them. Okay, these big corporations are starting to put the heat on them about the names that they use for all of their sports teams. Okay. Um, I think I did a lesson on this once before some time ago uh, concerning, um, you know, these these sports teams. You know, this used to be a pastime, you know, for all of these rich oil barons and uh, all of these um, rich steel magnets who used to own teams, you know, and compete against each other. Now, Snyder in and of himself as a, uh, as the owner or majority owner, I guess you would say, I don't know if he's the only owner or, 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 or there's a group of them that own the Washington Redskins. But anyway, uh, you know, he really is not a magnet. He's not, he's not some man that's known all around the world for anything other than he owns the Redskins. Okay. So, uh, this is how he makes his money. This is how he makes his riches. Same thing with, uh, What's that dude down there uh, from Arkansas that's uh, Jerry Jones, okay? He was just basically what they call, you know, poor white trash, okay? Uh, who was just come along at the right right time around the right people and got his foot in the door uh, and made himself we wealthy, you know, by doing all kind of scheming and scamming and underhanded shit. So, but anyway, he Snyder is somewhat... Of the, of the same material cut from the same cloth. He, he, he's not a person of, of, of real big significant wealth, okay? But anyway, uh, let's go on and we'll listen to, to what Roland Martin and, and all of his talking heads he's got have to say about this, okay? We'll listen in for maybe four, four minutes or so. Change its name. Here's the 
flock it. And, you know, these Israelites here that they got on the screen here, you know, they're not awake. So they still believe that uh, they can get things out of Esau, you know, um, and, and think it's a feather in their cap. OK, but uh, chances are they don't they don't know the truth of you. How about Shem Yahweh Shai? OK. And you see, all of this is just, you know, moves that they make to protect their wealth, you know, um, and Esau is, you know, being made bare, okay? Um, the Lord is, is, is doing his thing, okay? Um, and, of course, they, they, they call them Native Americans, but we know them as, you know, we're the Israelites. We're, we're not Native Americans. We're not Americans, okay? And I see that Roland has got his fraternity shirt on, but that's another story. to 
change how venture capitalism look, if you want to change how those white-led investment firms look, all needs all it needs to happen is these black public workers need to rise up and say, hmm, who is the investment fund controlling uh, our money? It's lucky. I'm gonna stop right here. You know, and, and, and that's that's what's wrong with Jake. Look at Jake and all these books, okay? You know, their minds are still carnal and in the world. Let me jump to a quick scripture here. Um, I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 27 and 1, okay? <clears throat> and Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And the reason why I read that is because even when you read from 27 and we get over into Deuteronomy 28, we know that Moses and the elders are talking to who? Israel. Okay. So uh, let's quickly jump over. I want to get into something real quick. I didn't plan on doing this. So so locking. I'm going to look at... Uh, Just a couple verses here in Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, to observe to do all his commandments, which in Deuteronomy 27 and 1, we just read that Moses told them that they had to hold it, right? They had to, they had to keep it, okay? To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee, Right? Curse shalt thou be in the city, and curse shalt thou be in the field. Curse shalt be thy basket and thy store, which is what I wanted to get to, okay? Because they're talking about being uh, 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 public workers and and having uh, your money put into a trust, which is which is you know a pension fund basically, okay? But you're gonna be cursed in that basket, okay? Cursed in that in that store, your bank, okay? So they're gonna always mess with it, man. Jake, you under the curses, you see. Let me jump back down to where I was going to go to um, because we know that this fell upon also, you know, the northern kingdom that they call, you know, Native Brother Americans. Black partners, what the companies you're investing in, where are their black board members and black senior execs? If you don't change your policies, we're not going to invest in your companies. That would change the entire structure grid. That's exactly right, Roman. And uh, it's clear that uh, business people can count. Look at all them books. Said, they're following the money. And the irony is that even as we see the attack on public unions in this country, which has spanned the last several generations, we see uh, whether it be Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook or whether it be Snyder soon with this Washington football club, they are looking ahead and trying to gauge the momentum of this general strike that's in the street. Even as we need to organize better to express ourselves, the simple fact of the matter is that these companies are realizing that their consumer base is increasingly non-white. You have another element of whites who are now saying Black Lives Matter and may be uh, inclined to spend their dollars elsewhere. And as you said, when you see the, the rates at which people are getting sick and dying with COVID-19, we know we're essential personnel, we know all the other factors, but one of the factors that the Brookings Report reveals as well is that the younger this country is, the more non-white it is. We're not going to be talking about minorities in the same way in the next. All right, I'm going to stop right there, okay? So we get the gist of what's going on. OK, the other big corporations are putting pressure on all of these other franchises, these teams and all these other leagues. Essentially, that's what's going to come uh, for them to change their name. OK. All right. And that's that's some of the fame that we're going to see. If you will. All right. Let me go to. Um, let's look at this. OK. I went to Wikipedia and which Wikipedia is just a. It's just a source um, where uh, you can you can find certain material. It's not actually research. I mean, but they do have some references in here that are that are um, that are good. And I don't think that's what I wanted. Let me see here. Uh, Salakia. Oh, here it is, right here. And here you see, 
you know, prior pro usage of different names of um, sports teams, right? You, you still today, you got what? The Redskins, you got the Blackhawks, you got uh, Florida State Seminoles, you got the Kansas City Chiefs, right? They just won the Super Bowl. You know, um, we're going to see how much pressure is put on them to change their name, okay? But you got all these different teams, you know, um, with uh, all of these names, okay? Indian League, you know, baseball, American Indian League, you see? So you got all these different teams right here that are named after the Israelites, man. Basically, that's 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 who they mocking. Okay. Now there was one particular story where people said, well, you know, they don't think necessarily that's what's going on. You can go to Wikipedia and see this for yourself. I'm not gonna go all the way through that. Um, but you could you could see a list of of I guess you could say uh, like the Boston Celtics, you know, people say that's not that's not racist or the New York Yankees. That's not racist. You know, uh, the Boston Celtics, that's that's a mythical character. You know, that's not they're they not real people. OK, um, so, you know, everybody's got their own stance in their argument. But the point being is, is that, you know, Things are about to change here. The Lord is really is starting to move even on these devils who got all the money. Okay. Let's go over to um, Second Ezra's. And I'm going to read a little bit of it. Okay. Particularly the part of um, the vision that Ezra had uh, where the Lord showed him what the, what the interpretation of the dream is. Um, I'll just start at, I'll start at 14. Uh, you can read the whole chapter. I'm, I don't think I'm going to read the whole chapter, but it's, it's a dream or a vision that Ezra's had, you know, of, of our Savior coming to save us in the latter times, okay? And he wanted the interpretation of certain particular portions of, of the vision. And so the angel gave it to him, okay? And here it is. Uh, let's read a little bit of it. And we start at verse 14. Thou, thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning and hast uh, counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Show me now yet the interpretation of the dream for as I conceived in my understanding. Woe unto them that shall be left in those days and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. For they that were not left, left were in heaviness. Now understand I the things that are laid up in the latter days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. Therefore are they come into great perils and many necessities like these dreams declare, you know, and that there's going to be great trouble in the last days. Now, of course, we know the last days started a long time ago, you know, even even the apostles. Paul and, and Peter and so forth had warned of the of the last days. He, you know, even the Savior talked about it in, in, in their days, right? And which at, at the very minimum was, what, 2,000 years ago, okay? So you could say the last days started 2,000 years ago when they began to preach about it, all right? Uh, let me go on. Uh, yet is it easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world and not to see the things that happen in the last days. And he answered unto me and said, the interpretation of the vision shall I show thee and I will open unto thee the thing that thou hast required. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. He that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. Remember, he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved, right? They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and have salakia and faith towards the Almighty. Now this, therefore, that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou saw a man coming up from the midst of the sea, the same is he whom the Most High 
or our power in the highest, had kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left left behind. And whereas thou saw that out of his mouth there came as a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing end of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Deliver who? Who needs deliverance? Right? And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, and one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one person against another, and one realm against another. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. So that's what Ezra saw, okay, out of the sea, coming up onto that mountain. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another, and in innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion, and Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men being prepared and built like as thou sawest the hill graven with thy hands. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto me. And whereas thou sawest that he gathereth another peaceable multitude unto him, those are the ten tribes which are carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Osea, the king, whom Salmanasar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt. Right, and that's what you call in the Americas now, North America, South America, and such, you know, Canada. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river, for the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsareth. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Okay, but that's this land that the Native Americans came into, man, you know, and that they named all of these teams after. Like I said, the Kansas City Chiefs, you got the Cleveland Indians, the Black Hawks, uh, you know, Chicago and Detroit Red Wings and all these different different indigenous, as they call it, names are the names of the Israelites, okay? And now is the time that things the Lord is throwing this place down, okay, that we come into that fame, okay? So let's read now a little bit of uh, Zephaniah 3, and I'll read from 1 down to 19, okay? And I'm going to end the lesson. We're going on 25 minutes. So lucky. I didn't mean it to go that long. So let's read Zephaniah 3 um, down uh, from 1 to 19. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. She obeyed not the voice. She received no correction. She trusted not in the Lord and drew not near to her power. Her princes within her are roaring lions, her judges are evening wolves, they gnaw not the bone till the morrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons, her priests have polluted the sanctuary, they have done violence to the law. So lucky I can move this down. The just Lord Yahweh is in the midst thereof, he will not do iniquity, every morning doeth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. 
I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste that none passes by. Their cities are destroyed so that there is no man, that there is none inhabit. I said, surely thou wilt fear me, thou wilt receive instruction, so their dwelling should not be cut off. Whosoever I punish, howsoever I punish them, but they rose early and corrupted all their doings. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations. Right, we just read about all that gathering, right, in Esdras that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shadu to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplants, even the daughters of my dispersed, who's been dispersed, right? shall bring mine offering. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of thy holy mountain. Okay? I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahashai, the remnant of Israel shall not be, shall not do iniquity, Salakia, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in her mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, right? Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgment. He hath cast out thine enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day I shall, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. The Lord thy power in the midst Salakia. The Lord thy power in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time, I will undo all the afflicted, all the all that afflict thee, Salaki, and I will save her that hate that halted. And gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Okay, which is really where I wanted to get. I'll just finish it out with the last verse. At that time will I bring you again, even in that time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. All right. So we starting to see some of that now. These rich, high-powered uh, Fortune 500 companies are starting to put pressure on these people who have their teams, their 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 uh, sports teams named after the the uh, uh, Nate so as they call them native people uh, of this land. Okay, but we know them as you know uh, the Northern Kingdom, right? Tribes of Gad and Reuben all across this this particular part of the of the world okay um so with that i'm gonna close right there I, I had some more but i think i've gone long enough um i saved what i had left for another time okay uh lord willing that was that was edifying uh again go back you can read the scriptures and go back and uh, look up some of this stuff that we covered in this little lesson okay with that i'm just gonna close i'm gonna say call hello yahweh by shem yahweh shah by shem with Peace to the hopeful elect of Israel. Double honors again to the apostles, the elders, the brethren, the great millstone, all like-minded brothers who are preaching the truth all around the earth. I'll see you again on another lesson real soon, Lord willing. Shalom.